Now, let us also see some definitions on smoldering. Smoldering, as I told you, is a process where surface reaction takes place. Surface reaction of some solid material which is porous in nature, where it is hot enough first and oxygen from the ambient comes to the surface and reacts to the uh, this to the surface. Like a, for example, if you take a cigarette, cigarette burning, cigarette you no know, some tobacco is packed in a porous media form, and if you ignite that, then you see that there is a red hot surface, small thin surface of red hotness that actually propagates as the cigarette is consumed. So that is an example for smoldering. Similarly, a carbon, a charcoal, if you take a charcoal and try to ignite it, you will see that it will be red hot. It, the surface will become red hot. So there will be no visible flame. There will be no much of gas phase things. Small amount of gas will come out. But you can see that there is no visible flame and only red hot surface will be there. So normally a fire in gas phase is called flaming reaction or we you call fire as a flame. Set of laminar flames or a com combination of laminar flames you can call. So, the gas phase reactions will contribute to visible flame, but the surface reaction will not contribute to any flame and only you will see a red hot zone. Such a process is called smoldering. Okay, now what are the factors which will dictate smoldering? They are porosity of the material because oxygen has to penetrate. Okay. If you pack it too dense, then it will not be able to sustain that. See, even in a cigarette itself, if you pack the tobacco very, very densely, then it is not easy for it to propagate. Okay. For example, you suck the air so that the air also comes to the surface of the and it uh, burns the tobacco. If you don't, if you if the, the, the packing of the tobacco is very, very dense, then you cannot even suck the air from the other side. So that means porosity of the material is very important. Then comes the oxygen concentration. So there should be some good amount of oxygen in the environment which should come to the surface. Then the diffusion, diffusion process, correct? Because these are all non premise conduction, kind of combustion. So here the diffusion transport process is going to be very important. Then of course the heat loss. If the heat is lost, then the surface will become cooler, that means smoldering cannot sustain. So the hot surface, porous surface should be present, it should be hotter, oxygen should be available, then only smoldering can occur. Now, please understand that, as I told you, smoldering can initiate a flaming conduction, combustion, because for example, the cigarette can light any other material. So, similarly, if there is any, see if you have a uh, say barbecue and uh, put some uh, say charcoal etc. This charcoal particles etc. can cause a fire. Smoldering. The charcoal particle undergoes smoldering. So smoldering can initiate a flaming com combustion or once the flaming combustion has occurred, wood surface etc. can be smoldering. Smoldering can result after the flaming combustion also. Now as I told you in the beginning, the auto ignition and smoldering are connect, con, uh, conducted, like, connected to each other where if you take the scenario of a compartment where there is no much ventilation, the partial burning of some commodity has occurred. So some hot surfaces, some smoldering has initiated. Now the smoldering will cause lot of fuel vapors to go out but there is no enough oxygen. The fuel vapors will be hotter, oxygen is not available. Now suddenly if it is exposed to a stream of oxygen by opening a window or etc. back occurs. So the auto ignition and back etc. are also can be caused by smoldering. So smoldering is another type of non-flaming combustion which is involved in fire in several scenarios. Now we will go to the definition for smoke. What is smoke? Smoke is nothing but yeah hot products of combustion like CO2, H2, etc., nitrogen plus some solid carbon particles present in this. 
it's not just some see particles may they it has some type of uh, structure for this see solid particles carbon solid particles can be of some size but it can agglomerate and grow to a given size so it can go to what is called a soot particle and the soot particle plus this products of combustion gas products of combustion together is called smoke so if if you take any fire hazardous material like say a sofa or a, a fabric or wood etc they phenomenal uh, they predominantly have unsaturated hydrocarbons okay unsaturated hydrocarbons is say c2h2 c2h4 etc or cyclic hydrocarbons also c3 c6 etc so this will produce what is called soot okay so this soot production will be present in any combustion phenomena but if you have good supply of oxygen or air then what happens the soot which is formed within the flame flame or the fire will basically be oxidized also so that means if you if you can you can see a candle flame in some candle flame you will see that the smoke will not come out of the tip of the flame in some cases if you go for a small candle you will see that the tip will be closed there will be no smoke will be which is coming out of the tip but if you increase the size of the candle for example you will see now the the tip of the flame candle flame will open so if i draw this the candle flame is formed the tip opens and smoke come smoke come out of this you understand so what happens is the soot formation is there but in some cases a smaller wicks for example if you take the tip will be closed that means the soot which is formed will be oxidized within the flame itself oxygen availability is such that the soot which is formed will be oxidized so no carbon particles will come out of the flame causing smoke but on the other hand if you go for higher and higher uh, uh, say material size etc then what happens the oxygen required to burn it completely will be not available within a particular height so that what happens the as the height increases the flame also cools so so if you see the uh, the reaction zones will be there so it is actually there will be some heat losses etc so what happens is a scenario is created where the soot which is produced or incepted within the flame will not be able to be oxidized within the flame so it comes out as carbon particles and goes along with the flue gases like co2 h2 etc so that is called smoke okay so you will see if i take a simple experiment like i have a small pipe through which i send a fuel it may be any fuel so even methane so i send a fuel so that i ignite it so a diffusion flame forms okay so for example i have a tube in which i send a fuel then a diffusion flame is formed over the tube in the exit of the tube okay now if i slowly increase the fuel flow rate i will not first observe for a low flow rate i will not observe any smoke that means the soot which is formed will be oxidized within the flame so that the flame tip will be intact that there will be no escape of soot so soot will be oxidized but if i increase the flow, flow rate there is a minimum flow rate of the fuel gaseous fuel which will produce this tip opening that's a minimum flow rate that flow rate is called smoke point do you understand so for any fuel if you try to burn it faster and faster in a diffusion mode a non premix mode what happens is the oxygen available for gaseous reactions will be almost okay stoichiometric oxygen will come but the excess oxygen which is required for soot oxidation will not be available so the soot particles leave the flame zone to the tip that will cause a visible smoke to be seen at the tip of the flame so such a flow rate minimum flow rate at which this phenomenon is observed is called smoke point so this is also characterized for the several fuels now 
ஸ்மோக் பேசிக்கலி ஹேஸ் கார்பன் மோனாக்சைட் நைட்ரிக் ஆக்சைட் கார்பன் டை ஆக்சைட் நைட்ரஜன் எக்ஸட்ரா ஸோ தட் மீன்ஸ் ஸ்மோக் இஸ் நாட் ஓன்லி கார்பன் பார்ட்டிகல் இட் ஆல்சோ ஹேஸ் தி அதர் ப்ராடக்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் கம்பர்ஷன் நவ் when you burn plastics etc more harmful pollutants like dioxins also can form okay that means the at a particular condition all this see for example carbon monoxide if enough oxygen is available that can carbon monoxide can oxidize to co2 similarly dioxins also can form the final products but situation comes when you are burning the fuel at a much faster rate try to burn it but you are not providing the oxygen at the same rate in a non premix manner such a situation will produce soot harmful pollutants etc so in fire we cannot control this correct so obviously you will see that lot of smoke will be present and the smoke actually decreases the visibility especially within a compartment if there is a a commodity burning within a room you will see that initially there will be visibility then once the smoke layer accumulates over the surface of the from the it goes to ceiling and from the ceiling it actually descends down and the smoke layer descending down will cause visibility issues